Hello and welcome, this is Melody from Melody Crochet and today we are going to be going over how to make the granny square blanket. Look how pretty she is. But we're gonna start from the beginning and I'm just giving you a little finished product idea because I found out something very interesting. I kept going until I hit 24 inches. That's what I do for a baby blanket and that just happens to be what I need in my life right now. We have a baby coming in the family and it's a girl. <laughs> I know everybody's doing a lot more neutral colors for babies these days and boys are getting pink, girls are getting blue. Honestly, I wish that had happened a long time ago because I had two boys and as you can see, I like pink and purple a lot. Ask what they're into or just make whatever the heck you please because no matter what color their nursery is, everybody needs another baby blanket even if it doesn't match the rest of their stuff, right? So this so. is the front that you're looking at. This is the back that you're looking at at this point. And <laughs> it's basically a huge granny square. Kind of like what you would put together in any other granny square project, but we kept going. Now this holds a place in my heart because this was the first project that I ever made when I was about nine years old. A girlfriend of my mom's got me started on a granny square blanket. And I went ahead and after crocheting this worsted weight yarn, size four yarn, on an eye hook. You'll need to remember that, nothing else, or just follow the link to my blog down below where all of my projects are listed for free. Or if you'd like, you could download a PDF separately from a different link. But I measured it, I weighed it, and it's 196 grams, which I'm like, that sounds familiar. And I looked on my ball of, this is, I love this yarn. We were at 199 grams, one ball. It would have been one ball. Amazing. I could never do a baby blanket in one color. You can. I believe in you. <laughs> Maybe I could. I don't know. That's for a baby blanket though. It's 24 inches by 24 inches. I make them that size because so many times people make three foot baby blankets and those are beautiful for toddlers. Mine are fabulous for the stroller, the car seat, the crib, the bassinet, the baby rocker, you know how they put them in the big cocoon baby rockers now and they just rock them? Or the old fashioned rockers too. So let's get started, shall we? I'm really, really excited. Grab one color, grab three colors. I grabbed five colors. You're going to need some scissors for snipping your ends. You're going to need an eye hook, which is a five and a half millimeter in case you aren't with the, in the US. You're gonna need worsted weight yarn. I used about 200 grams for a baby blanket, more or less will not kill you measuring tape for getting to that area. I will say, just for information's sake, 20 clusters across, not including, of course, the chain spaces. So that's where I've gone, which is how many rows? But 20 rows, which is 20 clusters across, that's gonna get you about 24 inches on an eye hook, give or take. You might take a little bit more depending on your tension. And then afterward, we're gonna do a border on this guy together. But first I have to show you how to make the blanket and change colors, just in case you want to. Alrighty, let's get started. I've got my eye hook, I've got my yarn. I'm holding my tail out because we're gonna be making a slip knot. So you're gonna take that tail of your yarn right there and wrap it around your finger two times. Now the one that's lower goes over the higher one and the new lower one goes over the whole finger. You're gonna replace your finger with the hook and pull the yarn that's connected to the ball. Boop. Hopefully it tightens everything. If it doesn't, then you might have wrapped the working yarn side around. You yeah, know, it happens. But now we're gonna chain for four. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, four times. And the one that's on the hook never ever counts as a chain. Now you're going to push your hook through the first chain you made. Hold those other stitches to keep them obvious. Yarn over and pull through everything on your hook. And you have made, hopefully, <laughs> a little loop. And that's what we're gonna work in. Now, we are going to have four sets of clusters. Each cluster is going to be a double crochet times three. And in between each three double crochet cluster, you're going to have a chain two, because those are each going to be forming your corners. 
Let's actually see what that looks like. First, double crochet is not going to be a double crochet. It's going to be a chain three. Every chain three at the beginning of a row counts as a double crochet throughout this pattern. So we need two more in this cluster. Yarn over, draw up that loop, pull under two, yarn over, pull under two. And that is your second crochet in this little cluster. You need three though. So one more, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw under two, yarn over, draw under two. Now there's our first cluster. We need a corner. That means chain two. Second cluster, that's three double crochets all by each other, still in that same hole. All of these stitches are going in the same place. I think this first section is by far the hardest one of the entire group because you really can't see where you're working. You're working on faith here. Chain two for a corner, another three double crochets, one, two, three, awesome, chain two, we need one more, we have one cluster, two cluster, three cluster, yarn over, three double crochets in that same loop, one, two, and three, beautiful. Now I'm going to go ahead and chain two for a corner. I'm going to find the third chain in the beginning chain three. One, two, three. I'm going to put my hook right into that third chain, just like that. Yarn over and draw through everything on the hook. That is slip stitching into the third chain. He needs to be made a square. Otherwise, he can very easily turn into a circle. So, what we have done, for reference, is this right there. And we're going to branch out with a chain three, and I'll show you how to do this, and start the second row now. But we are going to get to a corner. Every row is going to start in a corner, just for our own sanity. So stitch through any stitches that are between you and the next corner to your left. There we go. Might be one, might be two, whatever you need to do to get there. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And that is your first double crochet of this row. Now each corner will have two clusters of double crochets. There's going to be three double crochets per cluster and they're going to be separated by a chain two, just like before. So let's make a corner. That was one double crochet, our little chain three. So we need two more to go with them. One, two. Beautiful. And separating those is a chain two. There's our chain. Without that chain two, your corners won't turn as sharply and you'll have a bit more of a circle. Now, same hole, three more double crochets. Just need a little cluster. Again, without that, it's going to be rounder than it is square. Awesome. Now, we are going to go working into here. In between your corners, you're not doing a chain two because you don't want to square. You don't want it to bend right here. But I do like to do a chain one. So chain one, and then we're entering the next corner. And again, a corner is two clusters separated by two chains. So first a cluster, three double crochets. One, two, three, chain two, and another cluster, same hole. One, two, uh-oh, I missed. Two, three. Now we need to travel over to the next corner and we do that with a little chain one. Boop, right there. 
Now we're going to do two more clusters separated by two more chains. This is almost as complicated as row one, but we are getting very close to where things are very simple and you will have some serious potato chip crochet that you can go on with forever. Chain two in between your clusters. Same hole, second cluster, one, two, three, beautiful. Got a little corner going on there, but we have one more to do it in. So chain one to travel. First double crochet cluster, one, two. Let me know down below what colors you're using in the comment section. I would love to know if you're doing it all one color. I just chained two, we're doing our last cluster. Or if you're doing different color each row, if you're making a bunch of small granny squares, I'm dying to know. Awesome. Oh, and let me know what kind of yarn you're using. You can do this with any yarn. You can go down size, up size. Just use the hook that's suggested on the back of your yarn packet. Now we have to connect. You can chain and find the third chain. One, two, three. Each row ends the same. And slip into that third chain, grab your yarn, pull through everything on the hook. Beautiful. We're going to do another row together. We will change colors together on us, but I really want to establish feeling confidence in this motion. So let's do another one or so. So slip stitch into each stitch until you hit a corner. There's one. So slip stitch into that corner. We finished this row. We are starting row three. Let's do it. Chain three. One. He is standing in as our first double crochet in our cluster. So two more double crochets to go right beside him. One, two, three. Chain two. One, two. And three double crochets. One. Two and three. We are now going to go to a new new. <laughs> this isn't a corner. Um, when you are on a side stitch, which the vast majority of your stitches will be side stitches very, very soon. Um, when you go here, you do your chain one to travel out of your corner. And then he just gets three double crochets, just a single cluster. One two and three. Isn't that pretty? Chain one to travel out. Going to the next place. This is a corner. So he gets, of course, two clusters separated by a chain two. There's our first cluster of three double crochets all together, chain two, second cluster, and there's the second cluster. Chain one to travel out. We have a side stitch, so she just gets three double crochets, just one cluster all to herself. Chain one. And we're at a corner again. These corners will be fewer and farther between very soon. It'll almost be exciting when you hit one. There's my first cluster for the corner. Chain two. Yep, there it is. Second cluster. We are going to be moving. So I chained one because we're moving, but it is into a side stitch. So three double crochets. One. Two and three. Chain one. We are landing in a corner. So two clusters divided by two chains. Chain two. One, two, and three double crochets for my last cluster in this corner. Chain one to travel out of it. And what's next? Oh, 
side stitch. So she just gets one cluster. One, two, and three. Chain one to travel out of it and we have arrived at the end of this row. So we find the third chain in that original chain three. There should do it. We are slip stitching till we get to a corner. And I want to do one more row of purple. So let's start it out, shall we? So chain three. One, two, three, and second double crochet of the cluster. Third double crochet of the cluster. Chain two. Now a second cluster all together. One, two, three. Beautiful. Chain one to travel out of that corner. And we have a cluster. One, two, three double crochets. Chain one to travel to the next and another side stitch. Every row you'll gain an additional side stitch. Chain one to travel out and we have landed in a corner. So he gets two clusters of three double crochets divided by a chain two. Chain one to travel out and you're just gonna work your way all the way around the square putting a single crochet in between to travel out of each stitch, but each side stitch will get a bundle of three double crochets, and each corner again will get two bundles of three double crochets separated by a chain two. And I will meet you when we get right about here and we're ready to end this row and change colors. As promised, we have arrived at the end of this row. And we are going to change colors. Let me show you what it's gonna look like. So, let's see if we can find the color change moment in this one. It's gonna start with a chain instead of a stitch. Oh, here he is. So, you can hardly tell the difference between one of these and one of these at the beginning of each corner, but that's where I like to do it. But you can see there's just a little chain three and I didn't bulk it up by slip stitching into a corner. So that's what we're looking to accomplish. So in order to end, you're going to slip stitch into the third chain of that first row. Hopefully you ended it with a chain one. If not, not the end of the world. Yarn over, and that's how we fasten off. So just in case you haven't fastened off yet, slip stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and let's snip. And that's how you fasten off. Now, to connect a new color yarn, you have to choose a new color yarn. I'm gonna go with this very lively, not baby pink. <laughs> they call it tropical pink, I like that. And we're going to start with a slip knot. insert into an unused corner. That's kind of a used corner right there. Insert into an unused corner. Make sure you're working on the front of your crochet. The back will look a little bumpier like that. Grab your yarn and pull through. So it's kind of like a slip knot with new yarn. Now chain two. Normally you would chain three to form your first double crochet, but you chain two because that slip knot gives you a little bit of height. And I'm going to yarn over, hold your little yarn tail alongside your stitches that you're about to crochet over. Yarn over and do a double crochet right over your chain two and your little yarn tail. 
another one. Oops. Chain two. And another cluster right over that yarn tail into that same corner. And there is your connection, your first corner, and you've secured at least slightly your yarn tail. Now we're going to stop working up the tail, otherwise you will see it if you hold the yarn tail over the stitch and work on it over here. So don't do that. Chain one, three double crochet cluster into that first side stitch, and basically you just continue on like you did before. Chain one into the next, oops, and we are arriving at our corner, so two clusters and a chain two in between them. Exiting that corner, working back into some side stitches. They each, of course, get one bundle of three double crochets, and you travel in and out of them with a chain one. Mostly, I want to keep going so I could show you what we do when we hit that straggly piece of yarn right there. <laughs> now, you can hold him forward and work your corner, but I prefer to pull him back and work over him here. Totally up to you. You can even skip that whole working over and weave your ends in at the end. Totally up to you, but I like to hold him back. And I chained one to enter this corner. And now you see how you changed colors. So you can continue on your way, growing this as large as you like. If you like the baby blanket and want to go for 24 inches, that was about 20 rows total, including that first one. So if you count it, this would be row one, two, three, four, and we're on five right now. So you'd continue out until you had 20 rows total, not across, but from the center out. So go ahead and grow your blanket as large as you like. You can always rewind if you want to see that color change again. And I will show you how, well, you already know how to fasten off from your color changes, but when you are ready to fasten off, We'll show you how to do a cute little border that will give it a little bit of structure. Let's start with the purple. Now the reason I did this is because honestly adding the structure of a single crochet around this is going to pull this in and it's kind of nice to do that with the same color I ended with, but totally up to you. But let's start with that dark color. I'm going to make a slip knot. Pop your hook in there and attach it in a corner. So you're attaching your yarn in a corner. Chain one. Go ahead and work over that tail if you can. And we're going to single crochet two times in that corner because that was a chain two. Then on the top of each stitch, now remember each cluster has three double crochets and you are single crocheting on top of each stitch. Now there is a chain one, so in between the clusters gets a single crochet. Just one of them. And I'm gonna keep on working over this tail until it gives up on me. <laughs> I, am I am single crocheting in the top of each double crochet. And we've come to another chain 
so we single crocheted in that hole. More double crochet, so each one all the way across gets a single crochet. And you might already notice it's gonna start looking super square, super straight. It's just a lot more structured stitch than a double crochet. A lot less fluffy, if you will. <laughs> so continue that all the way along. Each double crochet will get a single crochet and each chain space will get a single crochet and each corner is a chain two, so you'll put two single crochets in that. Alrighty, I'll see you when you get all the way around to this corner and show you what to do next. This was shockingly close to a game of yarn chicken. That is what I have left. <laughs> but here's the end. You're just going to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we made. Go for that one. And then you're going to yarn over, draw up that loop, grab your scissors, pull on that loop a little bit more so you're fastened off. Now you're going to attach, and I'm going to be using my bright pink. I just think it'll look nicest. So, making that slip knot, and basically doing very similarly to what we just did with purple. Boop. To get under one of those single crochets. Not the very corner, remember there's this is it, two single crochets. We are going to get in right before one of those and attach your yarn. In these two single crochets, each of them will get two single crochets. Uh-oh, here comes Kitty Boss. We were adopted by a cat. Now in the next one, there we go. And everything else is pretty much the same. So each of your corners has two single crochets. So each of those will get two single crochets. Aside from that, single crochet all the way across. So every other single crochet gets just one single crochet. And repeat that all the way around. And there you have it, your granny square baby blankie. It is so sweet and it'll be treasured by the parents. I just know it. No matter what color you chose to do, it's going to be a special gift just from you. And so quick and affordable. It's a win, win, win. <laughs> but if you would like to put some special edgings on it, I will go ahead and link to my playlist for edgings at the end of this video. But I think it's perfect just as is. Thanks for stopping in. If you have any questions or comments, I welcome those greatly. I will be doing my adult size link hat tomorrow. And this is the kid size because a new Legends of Zelda game came out. So that means I get an influx of Zelda hats from my blog. I posted the pattern about eight years ago and it's still a winner. <laughs> so if you have any friends or grandkids or kids or know anybody that happens to be playing and just got the game, this is a great little gift idea. This one is Hunter Green from Red Heart Super Saver, but my son felt it was a little too dark. So if you have it, go for it. Any green yarn's really fine. We'll be making this in the adult size. This is the kid size. The kid size is on the blog and the adult size will be as soon as I post the video. So thanks for stopping in. Let me know down below what you'd like to see me make next. I love to help you guys make gifts and things for yourself around the house. Just small, happy, fun projects. They're kind of my go-to. Aside from that, take good care and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.